Hey there, how's it going? If you're a developer and you're using the default terminal still, uh, let me introduce you to something a bit more flexible and a bit better. We're going to talk about Tmux in this episode, which is a multiplexer terminal, actually. That's a fancy word right there, but it allows you to have multiple windows, multiple sessions that you can reconnect to even when your computer's off, you can turn back on and boom, you are back in your environment. So that's awesome. I'll show you how to install a theme as well to make it really fancy with Dracula. That's the one I really like. And yeah, we're going to probably make a series out of this because this kind of integrates really well with NeoVim as well. So if you're on that path, on that journey of learning all of these, this will be great. So let's get into it. All right, step one is to get Tmux installed. So if you're on Windows, I really recommend you really to go through WSL and just use Ubuntu. Uh, if you're on Mac, then you can just use Brew to install this. So Brew install Tmux, but through WSL, you just do apt install Tmux like that. So I need to run the sudo. So let's go and put in my password as well. And there we go. Let's clear this out now and to actually create a session. So basically a session can have multiple different windows, right? So let's say you have a Next.js project. You can create a session for that where you have three windows, one for your uh, NPM run dev, one for your um, maybe web hooks or something like that. And then you can have another window for maybe like Drizzle Studio or something like that. Okay, so you can have multiple sessions, but each of those sessions can have multiple windows inside of them. So to create a session, all we have to do is run the command tmux, right? That's automatically going to create one for you. And boom, we are in. If you see the red bar here down below, that means you've done great. Okay, so we're here. Now, before we get moving with the other commands and setting up and customizing everything, let's just get familiar with the basic commands. Now, I'm not going to go through all the commands. I'm going to go through the commands I think are the most valuable for now. And then from there on, you can kind of just go on and customize it yourself. Okay, so we created the session. How can we get out of this? Well, to get out, there's a couple of different ways, uh, but probably the easiest way is to say tmux detach like that. That's going to detach from the current session that we're on. So let's hit enter and there we go. Now, how, how can we see these sessions? You can do tmux ls like that. As you can see, we have one session named zero uh, with one window in it. So to reconnect to it, you can just do tmux attach. All right, that's going to reconnect to the last session. Now, one of the most important commands in tmux is going to be control B. That's kind of like your action button. So you do control B and then you follow it up with a different command. So if I do control B and then I do the percentage symbol, you're going to see that that splits the window vertically like that for us. Okay. Uh, if we want to close this again, we can do control B and then I can do X. And as you can see, kill pane one, I type yes, it closes. So you can also use this control B and colon. And as you can see, I can start typing down here. Now I can also say kill session here and that's going to close it. So tmux ls, no active servers running. Now, one annoying thing is if you just do tmux, uh, the session is not going to be named, which is a bit annoying. So I can just say tmux like that. We're going to say new s and let's say this is my next JS project. Let's just say next JS. Okay. So boom, there we go. As you can see, it's named there as well. So now if we want to reconnect to this, I'll just tmux detach. All right. Let's just kind of get the practice in, right? Get familiar with the commands to reattach to this. We can say tmux a for attach, and then we can say T and then the name of it. So next JS like that. And then we are back in. Okay. So let's say I want to take this window and split it in half. So we saw that before we can do control B and then the percentage symbol like that. Boom. Now, if I want to split this horizontally, what I can do is do control B and the quotation marks like that and boom. All right. So this quotation mark there. Now, how can I move between these? I can do control B and then just use the arrow keys. Now, later on, if you want to set up like a NeoVim configuration, I can make another episode about this. So you can use the JKL kind of keyboard movements, uh, but control B up. See, it goes here. So we're here and then control B. I'll move to the left. So now I'm here. Okay, cool. So let's just go and close these up now. So control B, let's head over to the bottom one here. I'll do control B X, delete that. We'll keep these two panes open. Okay, cool. Now, before we create a new window, let's just rename this one. So our current window is called bash, but let's, let's name it something different. So I'll do control B and then just a comma and we can rename the window now. So this is going to be my main dev. Let's call it like that main dev. 
And to create a new window, we can do Control B and then C. I like to think of it as like create, right? So there we go. So as you can see at the bottom now, we have two at zero, main dev and one, bash. So let's rename this as well. We can do Control B, comma, and then we'll say, this is my webhook, right? And then here we could do something like ngrok and run uh, serve HTTP 3000, whatever, right? Okay, lovely. We got our two windows. How can we navigate between them? If you want to go to the next window, you can do Control B and N. As you can see, that just switches between the two really quickly like that. So I kind of prefer that because it's really close and I can just go quickly like that. Another way you could use Control B and then the actual number of the window, so zero and one, right? So you have to press zero there, Control B one. Just a bit too much movement in the hand, in my opinion, uh, to go like that and then go all the way across the keyboard. So I like Control B and N. Usually I have like three of them, so I can just quickly go between them. Or else, if you don't like that, what we can do is Control B and W. I really like that too, because then you have a list like that and it's super easy to see. So I can boom, Control B, W, and I have my fingers anyway on the arrow keys. So Control B, W, and then I can just enter in, right? It just feels really natural. Especially later on, we're gonna switch the Control B to Control A, which is just a bit better in my opinion, but you might find something that works a bit better for you. So Control B, W, boom, switch the window. Or Control B, N, switch, Control B, zero, Control B, one. Another one that's easy to remember is F, right? For finding, so Control B, F. Control B, F, and as you can see, you can find the window. So if I search webhook, boom, there it is. Let's go in it. Now let's say you made a bunch of different windows, so Control B C, Control B C, and the way you can close some of these is you do Control B plus the ampersand sign like that. Okay, so Control B and, and then we say yes to close. Control B and Y to close. And there we go, we are back to the two windows that we have. Lovely. And you know what? Knowing just these commands, uh, you will be fine with Tmux. You're 90% there. There's a couple of other commands, but they're not as important. Okay, when you have some free time, you can look into those. Uh, but what we can do to make our lives even easier is install something called TPM, which is Tmux Package Manager that lets us configure uh, kind of like the shortcuts that we use and we can install a custom team and other functionalities as well. Because now if you if, if you are a mouse user and you scroll or you wanna resize the panes or whatever, um, yeah, that's not gonna work. So let's configure this up. But first I wanna thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. With Brilliant, you're not just memorizing facts, you're developing critical thinking and problem solving skills through interactive lessons. This method not only helps you understand complex topics, but also improve your overall cognitive abilities. Consistency has always been a key to growth and Brilliant makes this super easy with their bite-sized lessons that you can just complete in a few minutes each day. They recently launched a ton of new data science content, all which uses real-world data from companies like Starbucks and Airbnb uh, to help you see trends and make better informed decisions. This will help you learn data visualizations, algorithms, regression models, and more. So check out the link in the description below or visit brilliant.org slash developed by end and enjoy a full 30 days for free and also 20% off your annual subscription. So check that out in the description down below. Let's get back to Tmux. Okay, let's install TPM and customize our Tmux. So the command that we need to run is git clone at github tmux plugins tpm and then tmux plugins tpm. All right, so run this command. I already ran it. Let's clear this out. And after you run this, uh, we can open up a config file that lives here. And to open that up, you can do nvim. If you have neovim, if you don't have neovim, let me just do you can do sudo app install neovim. Okay, so install that. And then what we can do is say neovim at tmux.conf like that. Well, if we hit enter, as you can see, we have an empty file here. And now we are in. So to actually insert something, you can press I here. And now we're in insert mode, or you can do shift A as well. Uh, and the most important thing that we need to add here is those plugins. So let's add these two. Uh, you can find this on the Tmux plugin page here on the plugin manager. So we're going to add the TPM, Tmux sensible here. And at the bottom, you want to run this command here. Uh, that's essentially going to run all the plugins for you. So let's just take this, 
add it here and then hit escape, right? And then you can do colon, write, quit. All right, so W, Q, enter. All right, you can check if you head back, that still works perfectly fine. Okay, cool. So let's get out of this again, W, Q, cool. And one, one more thing that they recommend you to do is to run this command if tmux is already running. Okay, this is gonna re-update the config for you. There we go, cool. Now, now remember how I said that the control B feels a bit awkward uh, for the action key? So we can modify that. So let's head back here. Uh, we'll do O, press O. And then here, we can paste this in. So we're gonna unbind the uh, control B command and we are going to set it to control A instead and then bind it to it just like that. Okay, so let's try that. Right quit. You might need to run tmux source again. And actually, let's just detach. Well, let's give it a shot, right? Let's write control A and I'll do C. And look at that. We have a new window. Control A zero. I can switch super easy now between them. That feels more natural. Another really important thing that you might want to add uh, is, is the scrolling. So let's go back to the config. So let's go back here, press O. Another really important command is this, history limit to 50,000. By default, it is set to 2,000. And if, if you wonder what this team sensible is, this is giving you kind of like some really good starting point uh, to get started with Tmux. So you can switch a couple of option options here. One is history limit that's set to 2000 by default. So we can increase it to something like 50,000 or 10,000. So let's have that. So now we can scroll past 10,000 lines. Now for mouse support and everything else, what we can also set is the G mouse on. All right, there we go. So let's set that. We're gonna say WQ. If you also wanna refresh your Tmux, what you can also do is control B or control A in our case now and uppercase I and that's gonna reload the environment for you. So now, as you can see, that works. I can switch between uh, these panes with just my mouse click. I can also resize these easily now and scroll up and down. All right, so that makes it much, much better. Let's add a nice theme to this to wrap it up. So there's a couple out there. Uh, let me show you quickly. I highly recommend you to head over to this uh, GitHub page, Awesome Tmux. Uh, they have a couple of different teams here that you can use. The most popular one I've seen is this Catpuchin one. Uh, if you like the style of this, go for it. I really, really like Dracula. <laughs> just a fan of this. It just looks nice and clean. Uh, so to get this installed, they have two ways of installing it. And the easiest way is through, what's it called, TPM. So let's just head over here to their page. And as you can see, all you need to do is set the plugin of Dracula in, in the config file. So let's just head back. Let's see, do I have the nvim? I'll just do nvim at tmux conf like that. We are back in. And I'll just go here at the top. I'll press uh, I and then we'll paste in this command here. Let's copy that over, paste it in, and then write quit. There we go. Control A again and I should reset the environment for us and look at that there we go awesome job now you might have problems here where the icons are not showing up as far as i know you need to use the nerd font so make sure you get that installed let's head over here this is the one you're looking for i'll get the proto nerd font here so let's download that now to fix this what you can do is just head over to your settings it's pretty much the same in mac os as well Head over to the Ubuntu here that you have. I have to install for some reason. Uh, you can go to the appearance here and for the font face, you can select the nerd font. And there we go. This looks much better now. We have all of these color coded now. And if you want to further customize this, you can, do, you can output your uh, CPU, RAM usage, your battery as well, a bunch of other stuff. And the way you can do that, let me just head back here and show it to you. Uh, in their documentation, I really recommend you just having a look at this. So I can enable a bunch of plugins like CPU usage, GPU usage. Uh, let's just open this up. I can paste it here quickly. Let's go here. All right, paste that RAM usage in there. Let me just do a colon write this time. I can keep that open, that's fine. And then I can do 
Control A I to restart this and reset it. And look at that, we updated it. Now we have the CPU, GPU, and RAM usage right there. Uh, we can customize this further if I want to add custom names to it, for example. So if we just head down here, as you can see, we can relabel these any way we want. So I can paste that in rather than GPU. I can just rename this and say my honk. So have a look at this. It's quite fun to kind of set up your own config, uh, but that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I told you I'll start making more videos, possibly stream as well. Drop a like if you want me to stream and I will. We'll go together on the ride of learning NeoVim and become 10X engineers. So thank you so much for watching this episode and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.